What's up guys, we're gonna go over Jared Vanderbilt's midfoot sprain, which is actually very common with basketball players. And we're gonna break down his injury, what his rehab potential is, and when is he gonna hopefully get back into the court. My name is Dr. Marco Lopez, doctor of physical therapy and certified strength and conditioning specialist and co-founder of the Basketball Doctors. So let's just jump into the video here. So we had Jared Vanderbilt who injured his foot playing against the Celtics. When he's going for the ball, he, he stops. And if you notice, it's his right foot. His foot goes into eversion, which is the opposite of a normal ankle sprain. So a normal ankle sprain is inversion going the opposite way. His foot comes inward and his foot pronates a little bit. And those are the mechanism of injury of a midfoot sprain because you stop, all your pressure, all your weight goes into your foot, then it spreads out the middle portion of your foot and injures your ligament. And as you can see, after that happens, he goes down, it's hard for him to put weight on it. And that is the original mechanism of injury that he had. And then we're gonna go break this down a little bit more into detail. But before we break this midfoot sprain down, I wanna just give a context of his injury history because he hasn't been playing too many games this year. He's been missing a lot of games. So he was dealing originally with heel bursitis in his foot. So another foot injury, but it was his opposite foot. So when we talk about heel bursitis, it's if you see your foot, you see the bottom of your heel, it's not plantar fasciitis, but usually in the heel, there is a surface there. And when you have bursitis, sometimes it gets very irritated when you put weight on that heel. So he was dealing with that. And usually with that, there's different things that you can do. One, you can use like a, a cushion pad to decrease the pressure there. Or sometimes you might just be conservative. Sometimes they use injections to kind of decrease the pain. But when you have that bursitis in the heel, you're not able to run, jump. It just, it's more pain tolerance. It just hurts when you do these movements. And when you're playing basketball, doing anything, you're gonna hit with your toe or you're gonna land with your heel. So it's just constant pressure on that heel. But that's just a little brief introduction to his previous injury, but let's just jump into his current injury. All right guys, so his current injury, a midfoot sprain. So before we go into a little bit more about the midfoot, let's just break down the anatomy. So as you can see in this picture, and with the anatomy of the foot, there's bones in the middle portion of your foot. So we have our toes, then we have our ankle joint, and then the middle part of our foot. Our middle part of the foot has three cuneiforms, and then we have the navicular and the cuboid. These are these five little bones that go in the mid portion of your foot. And these bones, remember, every bone is connected with the ligament because it helps keep the bone stable. So those ligaments in the midfoot connect those bones together. So whenever we have an injury, like I mentioned, based on this anatomy, when this is gonna occur is when your foot gets overpronated or gets spread out so much that those bones kind of come out. And the bad problem about this is sometimes when we have a midfoot sprain, we have a Liz Frank injury where we have like dislocation of the bone or we have disruption of the alignment of the bones. So knowing that in anatomy wise, we're gonna break down why that mechanism of injury causes those bones. So like I mentioned, his mechanism of injury was an eversion. So he stops and he goes the opposite of an ankle sprain. So normal ankle sprain, you go to the outside. So you'll injure the ligament from the outside portion of your foot but he stopped, his heel came in and he overstretched that ligament because his foot now, when it came in contact, is spreading out those bones of his mid portion of his foot. And when you add enough force, that's what causes that sprain in that ligament of your midfoot. So when you sprain your midfoot, what are the symptoms? So when we have a sprained midfoot, one of the biggest things is one, it's gonna hurt. Two, you're gonna have tenderness in the mid portion of your foot. So right where that sprain hurt, you're gonna have that tenderness as well and swelling in that area. And it's also gonna hurt to walk. And that's why it's crucial to have an X-ray to rule out any fracture, but it's not gonna say that you injured your, your ligament because X-rays won't show ligament injuries. They'll just show bony fractures, but it's always good because whenever you have any injury that you can't put weight on it, it's best to rule out an, uh, any kind of fracture. So once you find out you have a midfoot sprain, what do you do in regards to rehab? Most of the time they're gonna put you in a boot because you wanna stabilize the foot. You wanna decrease the overpressure of your foot by spreading those bones together. So you'll usually see people in a walking boot. It all depends on what the sports orthopedic doctor would want you, but it goes anywhere between two to weeks to six weeks. So the recovery is dependent on the grade of the sprain and how you know pain, discomfort people have. Because once you get off the boot, you wanna be pain-free when you get off of it or relatively you know, very little pain, but sometimes they transition from a big boot to even a smaller boot. 
just get a little bit more weight bearing. But that goes to show in rehabs, the, the timeline is very different for every individual. Biggest things is you wanna decrease any further irritation or instability in the foot using the boot. Then once you get off the boot, you wanna start working on your intrinsic muscles, start working on the range of motion, stability of your foot. So this injury takes a little while, especially for basketball players because they tend to have bigger feet and that a lot of them are already in pronation. So when you go into pronation, you're already at a predisposed for that injury. So you really have to now work on the control of not having over pronation, working on the stability. Like I said, I know there's a big debate on fixing flat feet or not, but you really wanna work on those muscles that help control over pronation. That way you have more stability like the posterior tibialis muscle because that midfoot is responsible for helping that pronation supination. So whenever you play any sport, you have to go into both forms of the midfoot. So you wanna allow your foot to come in, but you also want your foot to come out to unlock it and lock your foot to allow the variety of movements that you do on the court. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about a midfoot sprain in regards to Jared Vanderbilt. I'm hoping we see him on the court soon, but these injuries are tricky. But if you guys like this video, hit the like button, subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments about a midfoot sprain, what you should do for rehab, comment below. We'll try to answer that. We are the basketball doctors. Let's ball for life.